This is the module 6, SQL Server Agent. The agent is a feature that already ships with all SQL Server versions except the Express one and is responsible for allowing jobs to be created, scheduled and monitored and is also have some other functionalities such as creating customized alerts for specific events. Every job in SQL Server must have an objective and it starts manually through transact SQL command or using the graphical interface. It can be also started by schedule which is also specified by the database administrator. Some common job types found in a production environment are archive or purge data from user tables, running executable files from Windows, audit access to objects from specific users and much more. Remember module 4 when we review the purpose of the system databases. So here is again the MSDB. It saves all jobs metadata such as dbo.sysjobs. The database administrator can also monitor the jobs execution in real time using the SQL Server agent monitor or of course using transact SQL commands like DMVs which we reviewed in module 3. You can also apply filters to the graphical interface if there are several jobs on your SQL Server and you want to get a quick report on what is failing, what has succeeded, what is enabled or disabled. And the output file from the SQL Server agent can be browsed to a notepad or the graphical interface. It's located on this path that it's on your screen. The maintenance plans are an alternative to creating jobs using a standard graphical interface other than the conventional method as you can create a single maintenance plan to have multiple jobs inside it like performing each one a different task such as backup full, backup log, consistency check and rebuilding indexes. I'll be demonstrating very shortly the difference between using the standard way and the maintenance plan one. Here is the pattern for a SQL Server agent job. Everyone must have a valid name, a login to be as owner and the status is either enabled or disabled. A disabled job is only able to run if executed manually by the database administrator or from a user with privilege in SQL agent. If a job owner login specified is a user without the appropriate permissions, the job will fail. And the job must have at least one step where you specify the type and output settings. The most common type is to run transact SQL statement, but there are others as well such as replication tasks, integration services package, operating system command, or PowerShell scripts. When you have multiple steps, you configure the behavior of each one in the event of success or failure, whether it will continue to the next one or quit the job execution. In the output settings, there's the option to either include the job step history in the job log or save the history in a text file. And a schedule is applied according to the frequency of each job run, such as daily, weekly, or at a specific date, and the intervals like every one hour or once a week. It can be set to run after a single event, such as when SQL Server agent starts. Finally, for every job there is the possibility of configuring an alert to be sent for specific events, and pagers to be fired for emails. The data in the squares represent each system table in MSDB that saves job information, steps and scheduled metadata. They are used when retrieving job data for reporting purposes. In the next demo we are going to look at basics for job creation, configuration and output monitoring. To start I'm going to add some jobs to my SQL Server without specifying any properties, just the job name using the SP at job system store procedure. So we have the integrity check, backup system databases, backup user databases, audit logins and purge data. These names were randomly chosen. I'm just going to deal with one of this list, which will be backup system databases, so you can actually see how it is inside SQL Server Agent. Hit execute. And if I expand the SQL Server Agent tab, here they are in the Jobs folder. I can also open the Job Activity Monitor and you will notice every one of them it's grayed out. Means they are enabled but they have no step on it so if I right click and try to start job or even stop, the option is not available. I have to configure more options inside each one of them. 
from this list I'm going to pick up the backup system databases, hit properties, job name, the owner it's my own login, description here is optional, if I click on step, new step, I'm going to name it backup master db, the type as I said before will be transact SQL script which is the most common one but there are others as you can see in the list run as, I'm not going to select any specific user it will be targeted for master database the command you can select the option to put in another but since it is a backup I'm going to leave it on master so backup database master to disk equals to that path we have been using in the other exercises. I'm going to name it master full.bak go. Before I save this information, if I click on advance it, I'm saying if this step succeeds, I'm going to quit the report, quit the job reporting success. In this case, because I have only one step. And if the job fails, quit the job reporting failure, which is the obvious option here. General. Hit OK. Schedule. I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to create one just to show you. So let me name this daily master backup. Schedule type. I'm going to put it one time only. Selecting the date. Let me change this. I'm not going to put one time only. I'm going to put it reoccurring for daily every say 10 minutes start date without ending date I can put an end date here but I'm going to leave this unlimited and here's a description of what, what I have just created hit OK and target I have to select target local server otherwise it will throw me an error and one option I forgot to mention was that one can put the output on a file, a text file, or log the information to a table. And finally, include the step output in the history. I'm going to do this so you can actually see what happened after the backup finishes. Hit OK. OK again. Right click and start job at step. So we can see the results. Success. Right click, view history simple as that piece of cake right I click here and there is my output saying the job was successful and the backup output here process set for pages blah 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 the backup database was successful the SQL Server agent log can be browsed by using this option you can select the current log or the archive ones where I'll be able to see the jobs that executed and at what time the SQL Server agent either stopped it or restarted. And also if there are any errors that prevented SQL Server from SQL Server agent from restart. Now to finish I wanted to show you the difference between the maintenance plan and the standard method to create jobs. In this case I'm selecting backup databases user full hit OK. Now the difference is these icons that the toolbox that SQL Server shows me and allow me to select some options to build a maintenance plan. I can start with check database integrity task then I can drag a backup icon maybe a rebuild index and maintenance cleanup task to delete old backup files. On each one of the box I can change the options to select what is exactly that I'm doing. This type, I'm doing a full backup, selecting all user databases. I can put the backup path here. The file extension can even view the transact SQL code that it was automatically generated and it would be, will be executed once the job starts. So this is what SQL Server actually does. OK. The same way you can do for the indexes. I can select the databases, all of them or a specific. 
check integrity task, same method. I can check all databases, only the system, the users. Once I finish creating the maintenance plan, it will be listing on the jobs on the SQL Server Agent tab, just like the ones we created. So it's more a convenient way to, to create. It really depends on your preference as a DBA. There's no right or wrong method, just a matter of preference.